My name is Yvette Kumbari and I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine as well as the Director of Bariatric Endoscopy at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. It's my distinct pleasure to present our paper titled Perspectives Toward Minimizing the Adverse Events of Endoscopic Sleeve Gastroplasty. This manuscript was put together by several authors both here in the USA as well as Brazil. So first I'd like to outline the endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy uh, is the image shown on the right, and that involves using a staple gun to resect uh, the gastric body and fundus along the greater curvature aspect. And this results in a significantly reduced gastric lumen, as well as increased gastric emptying. Furthermore, potentially the neurohormonal benefits are produced by resection of the gastric mucosa. The ESG on the left does not involve resection of tissue, but rather the greater curvature aspect of the gastric body and fundus is placated in a series of layers such that the gastric volume is also reduced by approximately 70%. There's some initial data to suggest that as, a, that as a compared to the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy where gastric motility is increased, gastric motility might be decreased in the ESG. Importantly, another difference between ESG and laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy is that there is some residual fundus that remains in the ESG procedure. Even the best efforts at aggressively suturing the fundus uh, will leave a small proportion. Now, in our paper, we outline that aggressive suturing of the fundus does seem to increase the rate of adverse events. And this is logical because of the extra gastric structures that are within this region, including short gastric arteries, the diaphragm, and the spleen. So therefore, one of the major take-home messages from our paper is to avoid suturing the fundus. This is a picture of what the Apollo Overstitch suturing system looks like when attached to a double-channel therapeutic gastroscope. Suturing can also be performed with a single-channel gastroscope. This is a, an image of a full thickness spine and if you look at the point of insertion and point of exit of that suture you can see there's a, a nice distance and the larger the distance it probably translates to a, a, a deeper bite. Suturing starts three to four centimeters from the pylorus, progresses proximally up towards the gastroesophageal junction and you end up with a lumen that appears something like this. You can see here preservation of the lesser curvature aspect of the stomach. The greater curvature is fully placated and is almost a watertight seal heading towards the antrum. So you can see not only has the stomach significantly reduced in volume, it's now a non-compliant lumen. So why did we write this paper? ESG is proving to be safe and effective with a total body weight loss of greater than 15% at 12 months. Widespread adoption is occurring throughout the globe, and we felt there was a need for a peer-reviewed resource to guide the endoscopist on how to optimally perform ESG in its current iteration. When performing ESG, you have two overarching goals. One is to create a durable sleeve-like configuration, and durability most likely is related to achieving full thickness bites and having a minimized tension at each site where the suture goes through the gastric wall. Equally important though, is that the technique does have a minimal adverse event rate. The U-shaped suture pattern, and I'll show you a video shortly, uh, involves starting on the anterior wall, coming across the greater curvature to the posterior wall, and then coming back towards the anterior wall. And as the stomach gets wider more proximally, you end up needing more bites to achieve this goal. This video will show the loading of the suture onto the needle driver. This is uh, done in this example outside the patient, although as you reload sutures while performing the ESG procedure, you do it inside the patient. There's no need to remove the, the uh, endoscope. You can perform uh, insertion of the endoscope without an overtube if necessary. 
Here I've marked the anterior and posterior walls with argon plasma coagulation to act as a guide to facilitate uh, ease of. You can see here that the initial retraction of the helix will result in an absolute pink out. And we believe that if tissue comes slowly and easily up towards the lens, this will help facilitate a full thickness bite. As the needle driver is going through a tissue, you often feel a little clunk or a crunch. Uh, it can be audible uh, in, in some occurrences. And this correlates, uh, when we've done this in ex vivo specimens, to the needle driver traversing through the muscularis propria, which is the ultimate goal of every bite. When performing uh, these bites, you often need to manipulate uh, the scope head both left and right. So you'll see here we've rotated right, we'll grasp tissue, slight movement left, the big wheel rides forward, hit suction, and then you take a full thickness bite. Now one of the complexities of performing ESG is, is understanding suture management here. It's important not to cross the suture, otherwise you get a premature knot and you'll be unable to bring the tissue together uh, on completion of your pattern. So also, what you want to do is start to withdraw the helix after three rotations, such that the helix doesn't collect any extra gastric structures. And one of the potential risks with ESG is uh, grabbing anterior abdominal wall or, or some more sinister structures such as the, the gallbladder or liver. So don't over insufflate the stomach uh, and, uh, and don't push the helix too hard such that it will impact cause the, 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 the stomach wall to impinge on other structures. You also don't want to be pulling the helix uh, forward towards the scope uh, with too much rigor, otherwise the helix will shear off tissue. So that's why it's important to manipulate the scope head into the right position before you retract the helix significantly, such that as you're pulling the tissue, you know it's going to come in a suitable alignment, such that it will uh, result in a large bite. You can take it from anywhere from, from 6 to 16 bites uh, per application. You just must keep in mind that the greater number of bites, the more, uh, more you'll have to slowly pull the, the suture through all those bites when it comes to cinching. And again here, you're really trying to get a pink out with every bite. One must keep, be mindful at the end to not allow the suture to be crossed. Uncross the suture deploy the needle driver, and then fire the cinch. Now, whilst waiting for the cinch to be loaded, uh, one can start to put tension on the suture and really start pulling the tissue together so you get an, a sense of what the conformation will look like on cinching. And it's a process whereby you pull, relax, pull, relax. And then you position yourself such that you can see the, the site of the first bite where the suture will go. The suture should nicely follow that. A final sort of pullback on the suture, you might get a bit of bowing on the cinch, that means you've got adequate tension, and then you can fire the cinch, and you have your application complete. And this is repeated from a distal to proximal fashion. So what are the implications of this paper? Well, we wanted to provide a guide as to how ESG could be performed. We wanted to educate people to perform the procedure to minimize the rate of adverse events. And we also thought it would be useful to organizations who offer training in ESG. And many of the uh, nuances taught uh, in this paper for ESG are also relevant to endoscopic suturing for other indications. Thank you.